Good morning. Welcome to episode four of our Practical Ideas for Crazy Times uh, webinar series. Uh, we know you're very busy, and uh, as always, we really appreciate you spending an hour with us. Uh, my name is Scott McIntosh. I'll be the host for the episode today, which is called Moving Sales Online, How to Reach People, Leveraging Keyword Strategy and Pay-Per-Click. And it's going to focus on four strategies to align your marketing. Um, and it's particularly important to focus on marketing during a crisis like this. Uh, we know a number of you are looking for strategies and, um, uh, you know, there's been a lot of us forced to change our sales and distribution channels. So very, very important topic. Timely, we're fortunate to have Andy Biting with us and also Jessica Embry to speak on that topic. I know you've heard from Andy in the past, uh, providing advice in his role as a certified scaling up business coach. Andy's also uh, founder and CEO of Tulip Media Group, and in, in that role, um, provides very unique SEO and content marketing services to companies across North America. Good morning, Andy. Welcome. Good morning, Scott. Thank you for having us again. Absolutely. Uh, along with Andy, we have Jessica Ambry. Jessica is the creative director and marketing consultant at Tulip Media. Uh, Jessica grew up with an entrepreneurial spirit, started her first business at age 10, uh, and very passionate about helping businesses grow and succeed with creative marketing campaigns. Jessica, welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Glad to, ha glad to have both of you. So, well, you know, certainly crazy times as we've been discussing, um, you know, marketing and finding customers so relevant during uh, what we're all facing right now. So what are, uh, what are the challenges you're seeing with your clients and other companies, you know, related to marketing during this crisis? Yeah, it, it's a good question, Scott. You know, during this time, a lot of people are, you know, in business, the first reaction when we go into crisis is to kind of you know, play defense a bit. And, uh, you know, you need to do a little bit of that. And we talked about that in the past, talking about cash strategies and so on. But it is interesting, you know, the real, the, the, the ones that are going to uh, prevail, I think, in the end are the ones that go on offense and the ones that really, uh, you know, look for those opportunities and their communication and their marketing and be there for their clients. So you kind of are seeing two camps. So, some group are still playing defense and they're, and they're hunkering down while others are going on the offense and looking for those opportunities. And that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. Mm -hmm. Jess, I know you talk with our client partners all the time. What, uh, what, are your, what are you seeing at a high level? I agree, Andy. Like many of our businesses are being forced to market online right now where they didn't have that scenario before. And I find this is really a great opportunity to take that leap and get started and try something new and innovative in their marketing strategy. So I'm excited to talk about this today and get started and show you guys some of the things that you can be doing in your business. How about yourself, Scott? What do you, what do you see on the marketing front? I know it's, you know, you're, you hover well, around that area a lot as well. I, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I, I have a former partner and collaborator in the innovation space and his saying is that people innovate when they must. And uh, so I think what you're seeing is um, there are a lot of people who must now. So I think the, yeah. you know, the, the level of activity and questions or whatnot is really unprecedented because it's, it's very much switched from a nice to have to, you know, to a necessity for really anyone that has a bricks and mortar presence. So yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's totally changed. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I uh, want to uh, get the session handed over to uh, Andy and Jess. I know they have a, a lot of, of content, just a couple housekeeping things. Um, and those of you who've been here before will know, we will have a Q&A the last 10 minutes. So if you have questions on the way through the session, um, please just put it in the chat window and we'll build the Q&A from there at the end. And uh, one other thing, just before we get started, we, we'd like to know a little bit about how you're feeling right now. Um, if you could um, open the, the chat window in Zoom and maybe just a couple words on, um, you know, what do you see related to sales and marketing and, and um, you know, what are, what are you doing um, related to marketing online right now? So if you just, if you just want to take a second and grab that chat, box and uh, 
The other thing you could do is you could change the recipients from just panelists to panelists and attendees, and then all your fellow attendees could see as well. So why don't we spend a few seconds uh, uh, in the chat window sharing um, you know, what, what we're all seeing on this topic. Yeah, and maybe you can even comment how confident you are right now in your marketing strategies or your go-to-market strategies. Okay. Yeah. So there, yeah, there's some comments starting there. Yeah. Uh, reacting to situations and retaining existing clients, not big on acquiring new. Okay. Should be, th should be though. More Zoom meetings as opposed to on-site meetings. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon, there's a lot more uh, Zoom meetings nowadays. It seems we're in back-to-back -back Zoom meetings as opposed to back-to-back -back meetings. Yeah, as we go through this today, folks, you know, uh, don't be shy. I know there's quite a few attendees, uh, but don't be shy to put comments there, questions there, and uh, we will get through them. So, uh, I, I'm going to kick us off with the with the discussion itself, with the presentation itself, and we are going to go through, you know, a lot of content here this morning. So, you know, there is going to be a recording coming out coming out of this that uh, we'll be sharing, and uh, the, everything's being recorded and will be shared. So, if you miss something, you can always refer back to it. Um, now, listen, I'm I'm going to kick us off here. Uh, this morning, and I'm going to talk, we're going to talk about four tactics, and they are, you know, knowing your core customers, being clear on that, learn from your competitors, optimizing your landing pages. So, you know, think about how you're converting cu potential customers into customers, and filling the hopper. How do you get people into your sales funnel? Um, all of these things, too, because somebody, you know, mentioned the comment uh, about, um, you know, keeping in contact with existing clients and that you may be not being going on offense right now. And that's okay. We're going to be talking about a lot of offensive maneuvers, but the same can be, you can use the same strategies with your existing clients. And I really, really, really encourage you to do that. A lot of our client partners with Tula Media, we're, fo we're focusing on that, you know, be, the, be the, the thought leader, be the person by their side during this crisis. Now, I'm going to talk about the first part just to give you a kind of a sense uh, I'm going to introduce the core customer, and um, and then Jess is going to bring you through the rest because really she's the brains behind all of this. So, <laughs> um, so that when you when you uh, when you you before you do anything, before you do any kind of communication or marketing, you need to know who your core customer is. You know, if you don't know who you're who you're talking to, then how can you expect to reach them through any kind of communication? Now. Whether your core customer is, you know, a CEO or, you know, you, you, a supervisor or manager, you know, are you talking to an entrepreneur? Are you trying to target them? Are you trying to, maybe it's B to C. Are you talking to, you know, couples, to students, to elderly, to young people? You know, you need to know the demographics of the type of person that you are trying to reach. And a few questions you need to ask yourself is, you know, what are their motivations? What are their concerns? What are they trying to accomplish? You know, one of the best pieces of advice I ever heard around marketing is, you know, most marketing, most people make a very similar mistake in that they just talk about, you know, the services, who they are as a company, the services, how great they are, the benefits, features and benefits, all those things. But you first need to meet a customer where they're at. And I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna explain a high level framework and it's actually a free resource online that I would encourage you to look at. But the one that we really like is uh, it, it by a gentleman named Don Miller. And he wrote the book, Building Your Story Brand. And there's the book there. And it's a great framework to look at. And if we look at the framework, the next slide, then we, you know, we can see that this is a lot of information. I don't expect you to retain this right now, but this is a free online resource. You go to mystorybrand.com. And this gives you a framework to help put that story brand together, that, that, you know, that journey of a, you know, a way to look at your core customers. And I'm going to talk about the main components of that here. So the first one is, the first step in that is to know the character. You know, 
what do your what do your customers want it want as it relates to their your products or service? What are they looking for? Who are you trying to attract? Describe them. Describe the, you know, they're not just a, a business owner, but maybe they're a business business owner in the insurance space and they have, you know, an agency or a broker brokerage and, you know, you want to understand who they are, their father, their mother of young kids, whatever the, but build that character. You know, a lot of people call it an avatar, a customer avatar, but you want to get an understanding of that character. The second step, and this is the biggest one. If you want to connect with people online or in print, doesn't matter. You need to understand their problems. You need, you, know, you need to understand the villain. You need to identify the villain because if you really want to connect with someone, you need to identify that villain and how that, that villain makes the customer feel both as an external problem as well as an internal problem. And I'll give you a quick example. In Tulip Media, we do a lot of work with a number of different industries, but one area that we do specialize in is insurance agencies. And you know, when we talk about the villain, you know, most people automatically think, oh, the villain is the competitors. Well, it may not be. In our case, in the world of marketing, the villain, we, we joking in, internally, we kind of joke and say, you know what, the villain is Google. Because Google makes co marketing complicated. The external problem is that they don't know how to start marketing. They don't know how to, where to even start with pay-per-click or SEO or what does all this stuff mean? Uh, you know, a keyword strategy was not even in existence when I went to university. So, so it's complicated. But the internal problem, that's where you want to really strike a chord and connect with them. The internal problem makes the average insurance agency owner insecure, L makes them a little bit nervous or, you know, not feeling, uh, you know, smart enough to take this on. They feel overwhelmed by the whole idea, the whole notion of marketing. That's the internal problem. That's their real fears, and you want to connect there. And the way you connect that is step three is you kind of present the guide. Now, when you're, and this we, we, we talk about this all the time, is when you are helping your customer in whatever industry or products or services that you deliver, you want to be the guide. You're not the hero. So many people in at marketing make that mistake where they say, you know what, you have a business problem, hire us. You know, we have all these solutions, our products are the best, and we are all these things, like we are the hero. We're gonna come in on a, you know, a white horse and save the day. But that's not the case. You wanna be the guide. The way to look at it is, you know, your client is Luke Skywalker. You are Yoda, you're, you're, you're Yoda to your Luke Skywalker, and you wanna be the guide, you want to be there, you wanna, the, the two steps there is to express empathy, Make sure that they know, you know, that you, you get them. You get how difficult or how the challenges that they're facing. And you want to show them a better way. And you need to do that by demonstrating your credibility, you know, your, what, you're been, what you're able to do. So once you connect with them, you connect with them on, their, on, on the villain, on the internal problem that they're, they're challenged with, and you show that empathy, you connect with them, then you can start to show them a way to uh, you know, to um, uh, you know, to to move towards a, a solution to their problem, which is the products or services that you're delivering. But you need to do that in stages. And the way you do that, once you have that empathy and you've uh, you know you you've outlined the uh, that you have the credibility, then show them the plan. Let them know what the process looks like. What your what your agreement? You know, what is your agreement? And so there's a lot of philosophical ideas here, but to give you a, a, a way of how this all works, at, I'll give you the example of the insurance agency who, you know, the, the villain is Google, the external problem is they don't know how to market, the internal problem is they feel insecure and overwhelmed, and we meet them where they're at. You know what, marketing is hard. And this really actually, what works really well for us as far as mar uh, marketing and sales messaging is that we start with saying, yeah, marketing's tough, it's hard. It's really, you know, confusing and it's easy to feel overwhelmed, but there is a, you know, there is a solution. Like, you know, I understand you're, you're hard, you feel overwhelmed, it, but there is a solution. We've helped countless insurance agencies, you know, deal with that exact uh, situ, uh, challenge that you're facing. And we've helped them show a way to actually turn their marketing around and be very successful 
uh, marketing their agency. And we've done that with countless other insurance agencies. Here's a few endorsements, again, that credibility. And then we move in. So here's the process. Here's what I'd like to ask you to do. Book a half an hour strategy call with us. And we'll talk about your agency, your specific situation, and what your objectives are. And uh, in that half an hour, we're going we're gonna to get a better understanding of your agency and give you, you know, basically uh, strategize on some ideas and tactics that we think might work for your agency. And if that, so that's the upfront contract. That is all we're asking from them is the next step is a half an hour phone call. At the end of that half an hour, if it's something that you like and you think it might be a benefit to your agency, we'll talk further and we'll talk about next steps and we'll see what a, a program might look like for you. But if it's not a good fit, no problem, no pressure, we'll move on. So that's the upfront contract and the agreement. And then the other thing that you see all the time missing in marketing is a clear call to action. How many times do you see people say, you know, we have the best products, the best services that we could solve all your problems, you know, and then there's just a phone number at the bottom or a website at the bottom. You wanna have a clear call to action. And what a clear call to action says is that, you know what, the process, we talked about the 30 minute phone call. If you're interested in that free, no obligation, 30 minute phone call, click on this link right now, book a time in your calendar that works with one of our consultants and we'll look forward to talking to you then. Be specific about the actions that you want them to take. Any, you know, it, it, even in an article, when you're writing an article, just gonna talk about content marketing here in a bit in, in, in thought leadership marketing, but when you're writing an article, we talked about this yesterday. You should have three parts. One, you connect with the clients. Second, you add value. And third, if there's not a clear call to action, you're just sharing information and you're not going to get business out of it. So those three things need to be in every article that you publish or every blog post that you publish or LinkedIn post that you publish. Those three things need to be there. That call to action is missed so often. And it's, you know, you're showing up, you're being there, you're adding value because of those three things, the middle one, that's the adding the value. That's what everybody does in an art, in a blog post, but most of them don't connect with their, with their audience at the beginning. And certainly by far the vast majority never do have a very clear call to action. So, to, you know, to recap, and there's a lot more to it than this, but to recap your core customer, you mean you need to identify who your person is identify their concerns and meet them where they're at and com complete that story brand so that you have a framework and that story brand when you talk about the character the villain the external internal problems you know the uh, the, the the empathy you know meeting them where they're at the guide the giving them the steps that is the that's basically the flow of the content and the messaging that you want to deliver but first you need to know who you're talking to otherwise You'll never, you'll never get there. Now, with this, I, I, I want to pass it over. I don't know, Jess. Do you have anything to add about the core customer? No, it's so important, and it's overlooked many times when it comes to marketing. People just say, "This is my product. This is what I do." They don't really get into that mindset of who their core customer is and what the problem is and what solution you're offering to them. So, it's very important, especially for step one, that leads into everything else that we're going to be talking to about today. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so now I, I do want to hand it off to, to Jess to talk about learning from your competitors. Now, there's a lot of technical stuff going on here. We're giving a high level overview. Mm -hmm. For those of you, I, I just thought of this, Jess, for those who may be on the call who don't understand, don't know what a keyword strategy is or keyword is, we take it for granted. But uh, PPC is pay per click. So it's when you actually pay for Google ads. It's a very effective strategy of done right. But first, you know, a keyword strategy is what are the terms that are being searched in Google? So let's say, you know, I'll bring that insurance uh, example up again. If, uh, if I have a small business in Fredericton, you know, and I, and I, do, I, need, I know I need to buy insurance, I may Google um, business insurance in Fredericton. That's a keyword phrase, business insurance in Fredericton. And you want your website to rank higher or your pay-per-click to, to rank high there. So. I just want to make sure people, a pay, keyword is basically what is being searched in Google. Yeah. So I'll let you take it away from there. Thanks, Andy. 
So you have to start with the basic premise that you need to know what your competitors are doing. So now that we have our core customer, we really want to dive in to see what our competition is doing and what opportunities we can leverage from there. And one of the ways we do that at Tulip Media, and this is also a resource that you guys can look into yourself, is we use SEMrush. SEMrush is a great way to reveal what opportunities you can be leveraging from your competition that you may be missing out on. You can do everything from traffic analytics to website audits, but the thing that we get most interested in is those keywords that people are searching and landing on our competitors' pages for. So SEMrush also does integrate with WordPress, so if you do opt to use this program, I would suggest getting that plugin so that way you can optimize your content and your website as well. Yeah, it's, it's a great platform. It basically, it gives you the secrets and you can find out why people are going to your competitors' websites. Exactly. So on your screen right now, this is an example of a report we do. Again, like Andy said, we're gonna do a very high level touch on this. If you guys have any questions, you can ask at the end or even shoot Andy and I an email. Um, so this is an example of a keyword benchmarking strategy that we've done for uh, one of our client partners. We blacked it out just for confidentiality sake, but this gives us a quick overview of how many organic searches they've had in the last six months, paid, backlink, display ads, um, unique visitors. But what we really get interested in is the non-branded keywords. That's where we're going to find those little nuggets of um, opportunities that we can be leveraging from our competitors and start to get people on our site instead of theirs. So on this page as well, this is where you can start to see some of the keywords that we've pulled from our competitors using SEMrush that we want to highlight that we highlighted that might be a great opportunity for us to start to leverage. We can see everything from positions that these keywords are ranking on, search volumes, keyword difficulty, and traffic. And with SEMrush, it's a great tool to look at your competitors, but when it comes to looking at search volumes and at better accurate numbers, that's where you want to start using keyword, uh, Google Keyword Planner. And Google Keyword Planner is a great way for you to look at search volume trends, performance forecasts, and you can filter by location and languages. So like Andy's been saying, we have a lot of clients who are in the insurance space. So we can really start to narrow in on where that client is, if they're in New Jersey and they're in New York, that's where we're focusing on those keyword searches on in that area. The competitive analysis that we showed you in a few slides before gives you the insight of what's working for your competitors and what opportunities you can take. Google Keyword Planner gives you the insight of where your money is best spent. So we really want to leverage and give you the best value of your keywords and Google Planner helps us do that. And this is just an example of the back end of Keyword Planner and what it can look like. So for example, we search conflict resolution and that is searched 22,000 times a month and it has a low competition value. And what we mean by low competition value is not a lot of people are buying ads spaces in this keyword. So it's a great opportunity for you to look and kind of own that keyword in your space and start blogging about it, start integrating it on your website, which we'll get into how to do that later on. And another bonus of Keyword Planner is you might be thinking of the word conflict resolution, but Keyword Planner is going, well, wait, we know you're the expert in this space, but your, your core customer is actually searching keyword, uh, searching the keyword conflict management. So you really have to get into that mindset of how are your core customers searching for you, but Keyword Planner also gives you a little bit of an idea and um, some other opportunities that relate to that keyword that you searched. And because there's so much information that you can get from Keyword Planner, we do recommend you putting this all into one Excel document. That way you can keep track of what keywords that you really want to be start to focus on and be known for. And we recommend looking at your company and saying, what is the term that I want to be known for? What is the phrase that I want to be known for? For Tulip Media, that's content marketing. We want to be known for content marketing. For this client, it was conflict resolution because the opportunity on that keyword was so high and it was searched so much that we 
we couldn't let this opportunity pass and that's what he decided to have own in his industry yeah and when jess talks about you know what, what do you want to be known for it's you know what is the term that when people search you want to rank highly whether you're paying for it in pay-per-click advertising or it's organic you know you just rank highly and you know there's I'll also mention too, there's, there's, it's, it's very complicated. First time being exposed to SEMrush or Keyword Planner, it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. When we're just given a high level approach, there are countless YouTube free tutorials if you wanted to dive into it. And you, know, you can learn easily on your own by just trial and error. Uh, Google Keyword Planner, you know, I was talking to one of a former client partners yet, yesterday, we did a book project for, and um, you know, I was saying, just get a, a Google ad account. Put you have to put a credit card in there. You don't have to spend a dime, mm -hmm. but it gives you access to Google Keyword Planner, that where you can, you know, see what who's searching what. And oftentimes, actually, uh, just if you go back one slide, um, you know, you could be you could think your customers are searching one term, but changing a word or two, mm -hmm. you know, underneath there, there, it, it shows results for the keyword that you want to look into and in research, but it also gives you ideas. And we had uh, one client partner that did a lot of work with commercial multi-residential developers. And, you know, we looked at, you know, uh, you know, we looked at all these different keyword planners and we found out that, you know, uh, residential developers or, or, you know, land developers, all these different things, nothing beat just using the term landlord. Landlord is what people were actually, you know, for landlord insurance, for instance, is what people were actually searching as opposed to residential, you know, apartment insurance or things like that. So this, you know, it, it's a big, powerful machine and it's a big, powerful engine that you can use. And it makes all of your pay-per-click and all your content marketing very effective and your website very effective. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's lots of resources. It, it's way too much to cover in a short webinar, but there's tons of resources online. It's almost another hour webinar right there. Oh. And, this <laughs> and then some. Uh, and like Andy said, it's all about how your consumers are thinking. Um, it's amazing how changing one little word on your website or in your keywords can make an impact on your business. Go back to the insurance example, Andy, that you were saying you might call it auto insurance, but I might call it car insurance. So it's really about getting those keyword ideas in the planner and utilizing which one works best for you and your core customers. Yep. So that was a lot of stuff, but like we said, we could probably cover an hour of just this tactic. So we just wanted to give you a high level overview of how important it is to learn from your competitors and get those low hanging fruits that you might be able to take advantage of complete a benchmark analysis, always keep track of on an Excel sheet or Word document of where your competitors are. You can do it, um, do an analysis every six to 12 months. Don't, you can't do it really every month, but every six to 12 months, start to see your growth, start to see your benchmarking and see where you are on an annual basis and discover new opportunities. Like Andy said, open up a free Google keyword account. You don't put in your credit card, don't have to run an ad, but you can explore. Sometimes the best marketing ideas are just because you're exploring something and you stumble across something that could be great. Yeah, and, um, and we're, we're, by the way, you know, the, the fourth tactic we're gonna go over this morning, just gonna touch on is gonna dive in a little bit more into how to actually do advertising and, and keywords uh, mm -hmm. content. So now you're going, okay, I have my core customer, I have my key, uh, keyword analysis and competitive analysis report, what do I do now? Well, a lot of us will jump right into creating those Google ads, but I wanna stop you in your tracks right there because before you create your Google ad, you wanna make sure that the place that pe your people are going are optimized, whether that's SEO, creating that landing page, making sure your buyer's journey is correct. So. Strategy number three is actually optimizing your landing pages and making sure your buyer's journey is on point with your core customer. So before you create a landing page, I'd recommend start with a website audit. Look at your home page and start your journey from there because you'd be surprised how much your home page can impact your conversion rate when it comes to your Google ads. 
our website is a great place for people in the awareness and consideration stage. It gives them that chance to explore, but you also want to make sure you're optimizing for conversions. So have your call to action on the page. Optimize with your keywords that you found. Like I said, we want to be known for content marketing services. So throughout our website, content marketing services is right in your face. You yeah, want to by the way, uh, yeah. content marketing services was a keyword strategy. Um, yeah. Because content marketing solutions or content marketing, mm -hmm. you know, just content marketing was too competitive, but content marketing services is where we found an opportunity where the mm -hmm. volume was still relatively high, but the, the competition was relatively low. So yeah, content marketing solutions had 880 searches a month, where in comparison, content marketing solutions had only 110. So there's a, again, that big difference in changing one word, what is your core customer searching? And when you're doing your website audit, I want you to keep in mind to keep your website very clean and simple. Don't be, don't distract from your message. You want to have the information front and center of what the problem is that your core customer has and what solution you're going to be providing to them. And that solution for us is marketing solutions that help them grow their brand. And when we talk about the buyer's journey, I want you to ask yourself three questions. What do the vis your visitors see? What are their first impressions? And how do your visitors interact with you? Is, your, is the information your visitor is looking for on your site right above the fold? And when I say above the fold, that's when, for example, you're looking on your mobile device and you don't have to scroll. You have everything that you would want in that above the fold area that you'd want your consumers to know. So for us, we want them to know what we do, what problems we solve. We want to have that clear call to action. And we also have a little video that they can watch if they want to learn a little bit more. But if you don't have that call to action, you're missing out on opportunities and of those conversions. And we, like Andy said, you have to have a call to action on every single aspect of your website page or you're missing out. And here the call to action is, you'll see you know, in our websites, is get started, book a demo. That button is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Don't make people search on how to find you, how to exactly. that. Exactly. And you had mentioned an upfront contract, and that's a great example right here on the page. You want to make sure you're telling your visitors what they are signing up for. If they're going to invest in their time, be upfront with what it is going to be about. So we have what we're going to be going over in our demo. We have how long it's going to be. We even tell them we're going to give them a call before the demo to make sure that this is a great fit because we don't want to waste people's time. And I think that's something we can all respect when we say time is money. So we're very upfront with how we're going to contact you, when we're going to contact you, and how long we're going to be in touch with you. And by the way, if you have a upfront contract, if you just go back one slide there, just mm -hmm. uh, another little tip, if you, if you want to use your website for lead generation and book calls to take the next steps, we leverage Calendly, mm -hmm. Cal uh, the, the, the app Calendly. And um, that's what this is so that people can book demos and it does round robins with different people on your sales team or your production team. Uh, it has all kinds of functionality and it embeds really nicely into your website. So that's the app that we that we use and it works extremely well. People love two things, convenience and ease. So if you can make it convenient for them and easy for them, they're going to sign up for whatever you're trying to sell. Yeah, and in this case, once they book a demo, it pops into the right person in our office, it pops into their calendar, we get a notification and it pops into their calendar and just little tricks like we make them book at least a week out so that we can prep for the demo but also we can FedEx them a package. So it mm -hmm. arrives before the demo. So there's, you know, you want to think through the entire buyer's journey, what they're experiencing every step along the way, making it as easy as possible. They book a demo. It's in, it's in their calendar. It's in our calendar. It's going to happen. We get a FedEx ahead of time. Like for us, the process works really, really nice, but you want to think about what is your process. And if you don't have a website, that's fine. A lot of people on this call maybe just have a Facebook page, you can still have that opportunity to um, book, a dem book a demo, contact us. Um, if you're a restaurant, maybe it goes to your skip the dishes page. So there's great opportunities. If you don't have a website still, you can use um, SEO and that buyer's journey mindset on your Facebook page, on your LinkedIn page as well. 
Now we've made everything pretty and we've gone through the buyer's journey aesthetically on the website, but I want to make sure I'm um, reminding you to take care of the back end of your website. Make sure your meta descriptions are filled out. Make sure you have, if you have WordPress, make sure you have an SEO plugin that you can fill out and put your keywords in. If you don't have Google My Business, I suggest getting it because then again, that's another way for Google to recognize your credibility and expertise and for people to find you easily. Um, so like I said, we want to be known for content marketing services. So content marketing services is right in our title. We talk about it in our little description right under that. And you'll see content marketing throughout our little sub tabs as well. So this is the word we want to be known for. So this is why we talk about it so often on our page. So we start to get those rankings. And when I say start to get those rankings, this isn't something that's going to happen in a day. This is a long term strategy when it comes to SEO. You have to keep going at it. And when we talk about blogging in the future, you'll see kind of what strategies you can take there to start to get that SEO ranking you're looking for. And I mentioned that if you don't have a website, that's fine. You can still SEO optimize your Facebook page. Just look at your description, your about section. Make sure your Facebook name represents your service and who you are. Look at your Facebook URL. Do you have your address listed? So there's little tips and tricks you can do on your Facebook page if you don't have a website. So now that we've made our home page optimized and everything, that's when we can start building those landing pages that you're, you're looking for. And I know you guys might remember this slide from earlier, but this is how we're going to create that landing page that speaks to your core customer. This is why step one in knowing your core customer is so important. You have to know whose shoes you're walking in to experience the buyer's journey and optimize your landing page. So we've been using the example of the insurance agencies for this whole presentation. And this is an example of our, one of our landing pages for the insurance agencies. We're identifying who the core customer is, which is the insurance. We're identifying the villain, the villain, which is marketing. It's hard, it's overwhelming. We're showing our authority in the industry and asking, asking them thought provoking questions. Now this landing page was built on ClickFunnels. That's just an, uh, one of the tools that you can use. There's many other tools like ClickFunnels that you can use. But the reason we like ClickFunnels so much is because you can't get distracted on ClickFunnels. And there's so much noise, there's so much things that we get interacted with every day on social media. We wanna reduce that noise and distraction level. So ClickFunnels is a great way to and resource for you to use if you want to minimize distraction, if you have a very strategic message that you want to get out to a certain person, person ClickFunnels is a great tool for you. The only, what you, oh, sorry. What, what, what we mean too by distractions is the, the only things that you can do when you get on a ClickFunnel like this, it's not like a website, you can browse everywhere. This here, you're either taking the next step that we want you to take or you're closing out the window altogether. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very, you know, it, it's, it's narrowing them in. It, it is a funnel and it narrows them into the action that you want them to take. Now, a number of them will jump off, mm -hmm. but the, op, the uh, opportunity that we're going after is that we want the ones that come out the bottom to be very qualified uh, leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're self taking themselves out of the funnel that we're creating. So it's saving everybody time in this aspect. And this is a great, like I said, this is a great tool if you wanna have, if you have one purpose, one message that you wanna do with your website. This has worked very well for us in terms of the insurance agency marketing. Um, and it's not for every business, but if this is something that you're interested in, again, ClickFunnels is a great resource to look after. You can do, now a lot of businesses have e-commerce sites or other landing page platforms that they use, that's fine. But this is just one of the resources that you can use today. Now, if you didn't wanna have a landing page like ClickFunnels, you can always host your landing page right on your site. So this is an example of one of our um, services on our website, Captive Content. And again, I just want to stress the importance of that buyer's journey that we've been talking about through this whole presentation. Um, back in early January, this landing page wasn't doing that well for us. It was giving us about one lead a week and we kind of wanted to dig into the analytics and see why that was. And what we found was 
our messaging was too complicated. There, it wasn't clean, it wasn't consistent. And the other thing we found was our Google ad that was working for, with this page was not being represented well. And what I mean by that is our Google ad was about how to make a magazine. And back then, this page was actually representing incorrectly. And it turns out 70% of our Google ad click-throughs were on mobile device. So when we looked at this page on a mobile device, the first thing that our visitors saw wasn't our magazine program. It was our newsletter program. So we were losing conversions immediately when people clicked on how to make a magazine. They came on and they said, well, no, I want to make a magazine. I don't want to make a newsletter and leave. We switched this around and changed a few other little things. And with in a couple weeks, we went from getting one lead a week to getting at least one lead a day. So sometimes changing the littlest things on your website will increase your conversion rate tenfold. So we'll do a quick recap of optimizing your landing pages. I want you to really look at your website, look at your buyer's journey. Is your messaging clean and consistent? Do you have that call to action that we've stressed about? Is, are you using click funnels? Are you using your keywords? Make sure your keywords that you've done in your uh, competitor and keyword report are you being used in your, your website. And keep your buyer's journey top of mind always and make sure you're looking at it on different devices because it might look great on desktop, but it might not look so great on a mobile device. So our last strategy is filling your hopper and that's creating that optimal and content for not only your website, but creating that those optimal Google ads. And there's many ways that you can be filling your hopper. There's Google ads, there's content marketing, there's referrals, there's word of mouth. These, we're just going to go over the first two um, for today. So we've got our landing pages optimized. We're, we have our core customer. Let's start creating those Google ads that are really going to work for us. And everybody remembers this fun looking spreadsheet that we have done, uh, we looked at earlier. This is what we're going to use to start to build optimal Google ads. So we're going to be using these keywords that we found earlier and integrating them into our Google ads. But it's also going to give us an idea of what we're going to have for our headers, what we're going to have for in our descriptions as well. And the great thing about Google is you can do A-B testing all day long. So if you, something's working for you, you can try out another variation of it and maybe that will work better. Um, you can do multiple ads, you can do responsive searches, you can do expanded text ads. There's many things you can do in Google ads. I could talk about it for an hour, but we don't have that much time left. So we're going to do it in about five or six slides. So bear with me. Um, so we're going to jump into an example of what a Google ad looks like on the back end. And we're going to look at the responsive search ad. And within a responsive search ad, you can have multiple headlines, you can have multiple descriptions. And the reason response search ads are so great is because Google decides which ad to show a visitor based on what they're going to be searching. So in this example, we're looking at our magazine ad. So we have different variations of how to publish your magazine, how to make your magazine. And you can pin what headlines you want to be shown in certain areas too. So we always have what is it they're looking for. We always kind of have a benefit and we also have what we do in our headers. And again, you can have different descriptions. See what works best for you. Do that A-B testing. The great thing about Google Ads is you can do that testing. You have those optimal keywords. So testing out something for a week might not cost you that much and it might be very successful for you and your business. So all those keywords that we had in that report, we also tie them together to that ad. So if I'm searching for how to make a magazine, that is when that ad that we just shown on that last one gets shown. So you can have, there's a couple different types of keywords you can have. You can have broad, phrase, and exact match. Broad includes misspellings, related searches, and other relevant information. Phrase matches included phrase, close variations of something with additional words before and after, 
And of course, exact match sounds exactly how it is. And one thing I'd like to remind you to do is to also include your competitors in your keywords when you're making these ads. For example, we have Blurb as one of our competitors. So if someone's searching for Blurb, they're gonna see our ad. And it's a great way for you to kind of steal the wheel and start to leverage those keywords that you founded in your previous report. The last keyword that I wanna stress that's very important to and can be cost saving for you is a negative keyword. So for example, if you're a hat company, but you don't make baseball hats, and people are clicking on your ads looking for baseball ad, hats, you can exclude baseball hats from your ads. It can save you a lot of time, it can save you money, and it's just a great way to keep your Google ads very clean. So we've created our ads, we have our optimized landing pages, we have our competitive report, and we know who our core customer is, but a last missing piece of that is to create content because 92% of all search traffics stem from organic searches. So you're missing out on an opportunity if you don't start to create that content. And it can be overwhelming when, it starts, when you start to think about how you can create that content. But let's go back to this fun report. This report is full of titles that, and article ideas that you can be writing about. So if you are in the conflict resolution stage, you found a whole bunch of different things you can be talking about, whether that is productive conflict, team building exercises. These, this is your blog titles for the next six to 12 months. This is how you get started. And if you're going, well, I'm not a writer, Fiverr is a great resource for you to just go on and get an article written. Andy's able to write three to four articles in the span of 15 minutes because he goes into a room, he talks to himself on his phone, and he, then he sends it to a ghostwriter and he has three to four articles written just like that. So it's a great resource for you to get those articles written for you. And if you don't have a website like we talked about and you have a Facebook page, the notes section of your Facebook page would be a great place for you to start to put this content. And here's just a case study of one of um, one of our, our associate uh, came across. And it's a metal roofing company that wanted to be known for metal roofing. That's it. So that's all they blogged about for a couple years. And they went from a search tra a traffic of 1,900 to a traffic of 14,000 in just the span of six years. Like I said, SEO is a long-term game. This is something you do consistently over time and it will start to get those Google rankings up. Now the interesting part about Mitch, who was the person in charge of all their content marketing was, he left the company about January of 2018 and they went from having over 15K visitors per month, dropping down 51% after he left because the people just didn't keep up with his consistent blogging. And that's what's important here is you have to be very consistent in what you do. You have to, if you're going to blog for every, once every month, keep blogging for once every month using that keyword or key phrase that you want to be known for. If it's content marketing services, use that key phrase. If it's conflict resolution, use it every time you talk about something on your blog. Have it in your header, have it in your description, first paragraph of your, your article, and have a, a call to action. Yeah, and one big one big point with blogs. Blogs are just a way to update the your website on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, Google likes it when they see that consistent up updates, and uh, you don't have to do a ton of it. Just do one one a month. That's what uh, mm -hmm. you know at Angler. That's what they did. Just one a month, and they raised their monthly traffic from what was it? Uh, you know, nine, uh, 1985, 1985 to over fourteen thousand clicks per month. Exactly. So it doesn't take a lot. Yeah. And once you have those blogs written, start to use them and repurpose them in different formats. Someone might not like to read an article, but they'll watch the video on whatever topic you're writing about. They'll look at the Ease newsletter. They'll do podcasts. They'll look at an infographic. So repurpose and reformat your, your articles and you'll have content for probably the next year after you use all those keywords that you'd founded in your report. Mm -hmm. So quick, quick recap. We're, we're about 10 minutes to 12. 
fill your hopper, create those Google ads using those keyword reports that we showed you in the beginning, create your content and leverage them across multiple platforms to get the best rating that you can get on Google. So a recap of our four tactics, know who your core customer is, learn from your competitors, optimize your landing pages and fill your hopper. If you do these four steps, that's when you're really gonna to start to see the return on your time and investment and get that SEO ranking and be known for what you wanna be known for in your industry. Fantastic. <laughs> it was uh, action packed uh, uh, hour, thanks so much. So um, a good question for me, um, you know, and almost back to the theme of, of the webinar, you know, crazy times. So what if, um, what, what if you were out there and you felt like you really needed to generate results immediately, if not yesterday, like what's the, what would sort of the express path look like? And then, and then what's reasonable to expect too? Like if you were a retailer or something and you, let's say you, you know, set up a, a 90 day plan or something, just wondering like what's, um, you know, what does the, what does the prize often look like for, for some of your clients? So. Um, I'll take a crack at it and then Jessica can uh, chime in if she has other comments too. Um, I would say, you know, you want to move in the, in the order that Jess just outlined. If you, you know, you go through, you fast track, you understand your customer, uh, you know, you learn from your competitors to see what they're doing. As far as driving traffic right away, pay-per-click advertising is a way to buy traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you, you need to have a good solid keyword strategy to do that. So pay-per-click advertising, you can get that, you can go through that front end and be up and running within two weeks, you know, with a, or, or less, if you want to devote the hours to it in a short period of time. But that's the short, that's the quick way of doing the traffic. But that, that, that uh, third step that just talked about optimizing your landing page or optimizing your website you know, it is so important. And that's what does take a bit of time to think through, to strategize on. And the analogy I would use is that, you know, it's like opening up a retail storefront. You're going to open up your storefront, fill, you know, stock the shelves and clean and sweep off the front step before you ever start inviting people to your, to your storefront. Well, if you're selling and you want to generate leads online, your storefront is your website. So you would never start advertising your store if your store is a mess and the, 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 stock, the shelves are not stocked yet. So, you know, people often think that, you know, pay-per-click advertising are gonna fix my problems, but you gotta look at the website, fix that first, then the pay-per-click. But if you could do all of those things, you can be up and running within a week, two weeks uh, with, some, with some traffic coming to your website and then if you're converting them well on the website, whatever conversion means for you. Some people, it's a, it's a, it's a phone call. Some people, it's a, uh, you know, it's a meeting booked online. Some people, it's, it's purchasing right there with, through e-commerce online. Whatever that conversion is, you know, you could be up and running and seeing results within a couple of weeks, two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. It'll really start to take off in time. And then as far as, um, you know, actual ROI, the way we look at it is that you know we can we can help create for client partners that we work with we can help create those inbounds and we can track that and 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 quantify that. Um, we can also help with the conversions, and then depending, I mean, every industry is different. Like I, I talked with one client partner yesterday, whose average sale is about a thousand dollars. So limited budget on what she can spend per lead. Uh, but certainly much higher than if your average sale was $40, you know, so it, it, it all depends, right? What the, uh, but you can start seeing results fairly quickly. Some early results mm -hmm. and pay-per-click yeah, is the way to buy so Right about now, certainly. It so. is, yeah. Okay, any, uh, any final words? Anything else you, uh, either of you wanted to add? Um, if you want to click to the next slide there, just one thing we did, uh, so, we wanted to do something here. So the competitive and keyword, competitive analysis and the keyword strategy, we thought, you know, if somebody just wanted to have an understanding and a better better uh, view of that um, for, you know, this is something we normally charge $1,200 for. We need to charge something because it's, it's a lot of work on our part, but we thought, you know what, for this audience, let's do it at 297 if you want to. If it's of interest, 
reach out, your investment would be the $297 and a couple of hours of your time. And we do all the other work. And it's really interesting uh, feedback that you can get, whether you run a retail store or doing things online. And uh, so we want to offer that up, if that's of help. The other thing that we can do, Scott, is in the follow-up email, is if you just want to have a half hour phone call and that's it, we'll do that at no cost for anybody on the webinar as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll put a link there and maybe we'll put, um, Jess, we'll put my, both mine and your link on there for a, for a free phone call if somebody wants to do that. Mm -hmm. um, before we wrap up, I do want to just get a, get a pulse of, of, uh, of people. If, if, if anybody wants to make any comments, any questions at all, you know, uh, about the webinar today, we we are about three minutes too. I just want to take a look on um, some of the comments that have come in. But yeah, if you have any comments or any any thoughts, um, you know how you're feeling about your marketing now. Do you know a little bit more, or do we confuse you more <laughs> than you were before? I don't know. Um, Barb says thank you. Um, yeah. So yeah, so some of the, you know, and all of these things, by the way, all of these things can work just as effectively if you're communicating with existing clients as if you're going after new clients. You know, it's the same tactics, the same strategies. The keyword strategy, you know, I, I, I sometimes people say, well, no, I've got my audience. Well, the keyword strategy gives you insight into how they're actually, how they actually communicate. So that's always interesting, but it's the same tactics. Um, yeah, someone else said, uh, great content. Well, well, it can feel overwhelming if you don't have a lot of experience on the back end. Um, yeah, content marketing is absolutely essential and be communicating. You know, even if you're not doing a, a really hard pressed outbound marketing strategy by communicating, sharing your knowledge. When I do keynotes, I always tell people, you know, if you, if you worked in your industry for five years, you know a lot of stuff. You know, you have a lot of expertise. Mm -hmm. Share that with your audience and you'll be deemed and you'll be positioned as a thought leader. So share it. If, um, if you find writing difficult, do what I do. I work with a ghostwriter. I love her. She's awesome now. And, you know, we, we have a good, uh, a good working relationship. And, um, you know, it, it, can, it can happen so easily. You can put it together so easily be consistent with it and like you said andy communication is key especially during these crazy times i see one person commented here that they're trying to just keep their students engaged by doing uh yoga via facebook live and sharing with new potential clients that's a great idea right now if you can't monetize you can at least be engaging with your your customer base so whether it's you're doing those facebook lives maybe you're teaming up with someone else who's in your industry and creating a a package that you can monetize. It's a great way and we're, we have a great opportunity right now with the way our digital age is to engage with those people. I mean, Zoom has never been more popular and luckily we have this technology that we're able to have these conversations and communicate with people on a regular basis. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I, think we, I think we should uh, start Wrap there. Uh, yep. um, such an interesting topic. We could certainly, you know, uh, like you said, I think we could do a week seminar in, uh, without adding any new topics, but um, we will wrap it there. As usual, there'll be an email with a replay and a transcript, uh, feedback survey, um, some of the, the tools and offers Andy's mentioned. Next week, we're going to look at working remotely and effectively. We're going to have Donna Nicoarda here with us from Leverage, and they've been helping companies around the world really um, work online. So it'll it'll be sort of like you know okay now you have zoom and and now what you know and 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 what other you know sort of thinking might you need to apply it looks like we'll all be in this mode for a while so i'm looking for that one as well same time same place uh next week please spread the word and uh thanks again for your uh continued uh involvement in the series we really appreciate it have a great okay. day thanks scott yes thank you, you andy thanks yeah everybody